Hey peeps, it's Mojax from the future here. I had this video shot, edited, uploaded and ready for release. And then I noticed that ADJ had just announced a new product, the WMX-1. As you will see by comparing these images with the Wolfmix W1 in the video, they are the same product, with the only change being in the branding. The ADJ version even comes with the same WTool software. It looks like the price of the WMX-1 will be around $650 and it will not be available in Europe for now. So if you're in Europe, you can get yourself the Wolfmix and in the US the ADJ WMX1. And you can assume, unless I find out otherwise, that everything I've said in this video also applies to the WMX1. Now, on with the show. Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax and today we're taking a look at the W1 from Wolfmix. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you might have correctly come to the conclusion that I am super into lighting now. And I really am. And I never used to be back in the day, you know, even when I was a mobile DJ many, many years ago, I just want that into lighting because I didn't really understand it. The big stumbling block was DMX. Now DMX, if you're not familiar with it, can be a bit of a nightmare. It is a pain, it is a big hassle, and there's a lot to learn about DMX because it doesn't quite correlate with anything you might know from the audio world. You know, it does things in a kind of different way. But thanks to SoundSwitch, and you know, all credit to SoundSwitch and to Record Box Lighting, I now have more of a handle on the DMX universe, no pun intended. So I wanted to look beyond those offerings and look at something which is in some ways a bit more traditional, but in some ways really, really innovative. And the Wolfmix W1 absolutely fits that bill. So having told you how DMX can be rather opaque for new users, I will warn you that this review won't be of much help if you're just at the learning stage. It would make the video incredibly long if I had to break down a lot of the concepts which the W1 relies on. What I will do, however, is promise you an episode of Beat Source Basics very soon, in which I'll take you through everything you need to know in order to get started with DMX. Wolfmix may not be a hugely familiar name in the lighting world, but the parent company behind it, Nickelodeon, should almost certainly ring a few bells if you're into DMX. The Swiss company started out making DMX control software for the Commodore Amiga all the way back in 1987, and now their suite of brands includes Daslight, Sunlight, DMX Soft and Light Rider, and they also developed My DMX Go for ADJ. So if you're looking for software DMX control, either on a traditional computer or a tablet, they have you covered already. But the Wolfmix W1 proposition is very different, offering a full suite of DMX controls, but completely standalone in hardware. From what I can see, a lot of the ways things work on the W1 are actually quite similar to how they work in the likes of Light Rider. so a transition from a system like that ought to be very straightforward. The W1 costs around €700 Euros or £600 in the UK. That price certainly isn't cheap compared to buying a DMX interface and software, but of course with those you will need a computer or tablet to run it with. We'll talk now about the hardware itself, which I think is absolutely on point. The plastic build feels very dense and sturdy, and I'd be quite happy carrying it around just in a bag, perhaps with a deck saver for a little extra protection. The many pads on the top surface are all really responsive and comfortable to use, and the backlighting is well-defined enough to use even in a brighter environment. There are four endless rotary encoders, and of course the full-color touchscreen, which offers a very wide viewing angle and punchy, vibrant colors. The touch targets, despite being fairly small, are also precise, and I had no problem navigating the menus or controls at any point in my testing. The unit is powered via USB, whether directly into the wall or into a computer. This can be a touch fussy. Wolfmix recommend only using their own power plug and cable, but on a 2019 MacBook Pro, that cable didn't work. Whatever kind of USB-C adapter I tried. I was able to connect it using a USB-B to C cable though, and that worked fine. Next to the USB socket, there's a stereo 3.5mm line input, which can be used instead of the built-in microphone to get more accurate sound-to-light performance. We'll talk about that later. Also on the back are a total of four DMX outputs, two on 5-pin and two on 3-pin, enabling up to four universes of 512 DMX channels each. I say up to, as by default, the W1 has two universes enabled. If you want a third or fourth, those are a paid upgrade at $99 per universe. You need a rather heavy-duty lighting rig to even exceed a single universe, so I think that upgrade pricing is fair, considering you get two out of the box as standard. 
What I really like is that you can assign the outputs in many different ways. So I had universe 1 assigned to all 4 outputs, giving me 4 sockets to use. You may need to pick up some 3 pin or 5 pin converters to use them all, but they're easy enough to get. So if you want to run a cable or 2 to some lights, and also a wireless DMX transmitter at the same time, that's easily done on the W1. If you look at the price of dedicated DMX splitters, that seems like a really nice bonus feature to me. What surprised me most when I started using the W1 is just how much of the functionality of the unit is accessed via the hardware itself. There is an application that goes with it, WTools, but that really is only needed for unlocking feature upgrades, sending extra fixture profiles to the device, and backing up your projects. It also enables BPM sync with software. You can hook up the W1 to Ableton Link via the WTools app, for use with programs like Ableton or Tractor, or to OS2L, which Virtual DJ supports. The obvious downside to that is that the Wolf Mix then needs to be connected to a computer, but in that situation you're already using a computer, so no biggie and it works really well. The alternative, the audio BPM detection, is pretty good, especially when using the line input instead of the mic, but of course that won't ever be quite as tight as a dedicated sync source. In my testing, I mostly relied on the audio detection and it was perfectly usable for me, and there's always the BPM tap option if things go wrong. And that brings me to something I just want to make really clear at this stage. Apart from when testing out things like Ableton Link or using the Visualizer, the overwhelming majority of my time spent with the W1 has been spent using it purely as a standalone device. I built my universes with it, I created my presets with it, and I performed with it. No computer was required. The W1 isn't a dongle or interface for software, it's a hardware box which has the power to perform all the jobs that software would normally do for you. Before I demonstrate some of the functions of the W1, a note on how I'll be doing that demo. Another $99 paid upgrade allows the W1 to link with the EasyView 2 DMX visualization software, which is what you'll be seeing. It's a decent application, which could potentially be very useful if you work with lots of different rigs or often want to do programming without your lights set up. After using it, I feel like I probably wouldn't bother myself. My rig isn't huge and I really haven't felt the need to use the visualizer apart from when filming this video, but it could could well be an absolute killer feature for some of you who are watching this, so I'm very glad that Wolfmix offer it as an option. So this is like your home screen, you'll be looking at this one probably quite a lot. We've got our different groups of fixtures, so we have movers, up lights, a mini decker, ape lab, stuff on there. We actually have another four groups as well, E, F, G and H. So we can go between our different groups and we have multiple fixtures within those groups, but you will generally group them together. So in my case, you know, group A is all moving heads, Group, group B is all up lights, and we can see those in the visualizer on the screen. So I've got four moving heads there and six up lights. And then below that, we have the effects. So we have color effects, move effects, and beam effects. Obviously, they will apply to different kinds of lights. So up lights will not have move effects. In general, the, the color effects will apply to everything. Let's go into that color effects page. So we can choose what groups this is going to impact. And in my case, I'm doing everything. We can adjust the speed either manually or we can synchronize it to the BPM or whatever we want. Basically, in terms of that, we can choose what beat it goes to as well, whether it's a, you know, one beat or whatever we like. And, but I'm just going to go manual speed for now. And then it's a rainbow effect on here. So let's set up a few different colors. And now we can see it's going through all of these colors that I'm selecting down below. So if I just wanted it to go red and blue, I can do that. Now it's going to go between red and blue. So again, we can adjust the speed. We can adjust the phase. So whether all the lights change to that color at the same time, if it's zero, or we can phase it. So they are moving in a kind of chase. And then we have the size, which is not relevant for this, but it will be for the movement effects and the, whether they fade or they cut. So if we turn the fade down to zero, they cut between the different colors. We turn the fade right up to 100%. They do a gradual fade between those colors. And this one is like a twinkly star thing. So this will change more organically. Then we have like a chase for the color change. Then we have this kind of 70s disco vibe, which actually looks really good with real fixtures in real life. It looks fantastic. A second kind of rainbow, second kind of twinkly one. So lots of different options and there's a proper chase as well. So loads of ways to make that work. And you can kind of adjust all this on the fly if I want to change in and bring some different colors in. And now I want to bring in some yellows and greens. I can just do that. So if you're working with your lights live, then this is a fantastic way to work. Now, of course, you can save all of this as a preset, which we'll look at later. 
but to actually work and perform with the lights, if you're doing the lights, then this is very easy to use. We move on to the move effects, and these will only apply, of course, to the moving head, but we can go up and down, we can go left and right, we can go round in a circle, we can do like an eight ball or a magic lamp kind of thing, which is another kind of pattern that they do. We've got, again, a kind of disco-y vibe. So, and the same thing applies, basically. You can change the speed manually, you can have them move in phase rather than all at once. You can adjust the size so how far they fan out as well. So you have lots of options for controlling all this on the fly right there. And again, whether it's a fast, whether it's a fade between the movements or a fast one. Beam effects as well. This will do sort of the intensity of the lights. So we can have, let's go for that there. And you can see now the intensity is chasing and I've got all of them activated. And again, we can change the speed, do it manually. We can adjust phase on it, size. So these effects controls are really fantastic for that live actual kind of light jockey kind of usage. Absolutely fantastic. But let's say I've set that up now. I've got these beam effects and the move effect. I'm really happy with my scene that I've got there. What am I going to do beyond that? Well, now we can save that as a preset. So I have my bunch of presets over here, but I'm going to go in, I'm going to set, go to my second page and I'm going to add in another one. So let's hold shift, got preset 25. And now, so I'll go to preset 21, there's preset 25, and it's gone back to that setting that I just had. So that is saved in there. Now these presets, they're useful for when you're being a light jockey, but they're also very, very useful for when you just wanna let this thing kind of do its own thing. So I'm gonna go back to page one. I have 20 presets on this page, because we've got five columns of, you know, five by four. So we've got 20 on each page, all right? And that means that we have 100 presets altogether. Now, I've made a, whole series there let's say that second column that is disco that's great but i just i don't want to have to touch it i want to let it go through those on its own well you can do that just press play and i'm going to play the column we could play all we could play random we could play the whole page in order but i'm just going to play this column in order so now it will go through these different ones and i can set how long it takes to change between each preset as well so how long it will hold for with each one and that will go through completely automatically. And that is where, as a DJ, that really works for me because I can set on my presets. Let's say I've got a whole page of presets for warm up. I can start on that page, let it play that whole page. Then I can have page two, move over to that and let it play through page two. And that's my peak time lighting presets, for example. So that's where this really, yeah, really works for a DJ, whether you're a mobile DJ, somebody working in a bar or a club because you don't have to look after it all the time and baby it. Yeah, in terms of your actual presets, fantastic. Just let those roll and you'll be very happy. But of course you might then want to override what's happening and add a bit of you know, whiz bang fun when that's happening. So we have various options for that. We have this wolf mix button up here, which makes stuff go like this. That does some very cool effect. It looks fantastic with actual lights running. It's kind of a strobey, chasey kind of thing, and it just looks amazing. You can choose whether that is on a timer for five seconds, one second, or 10 seconds, or whether it's just a toggle, you turn it on or off, or just a flash. So if I just hold it down now, if I let go, it will stop. So that's a great way of adding a bit of energy into a room just for a second. Likewise with strobe, you can have strobe on a timer, or you can just have it on so you just tap it or hold it down and then release. You know, you've got loads of options there. Really like having the instant strobe and blinder as well. You can turn a blinder on. Same options apply with that too. Um, speed basically doubles the speed of what's going on. So if we've got a preset running now over here, it's quite a fast one, but if I hit speed, it will double. Again, we can choose a timer for that. We can have it to be a hold thing or just a flash thing, whatever we want. Blackout, same again, and smoke to run your smoke machine. Of course, you can put your smoke machine in there inside the project so your smoke machine is receiving DMX from the Wolfmix W1 as well. The static column of pads on the left of the W1 allows you to set your favorite colors, positions, and gobos globally, which means they will override the existing settings of your running preset. So, for example, if you wanted to make all of your uplights red, you can select that from the 10 default colors, or even use the color picker to make a custom red of your own. The same applies to positions for moving heads and gobos too, and the live edits button lets you create certain looks for individual fixtures to highlight something like a stage or wedding cake, for example, and they can be locked so that changing presets 
sets doesn't override them. This is all very powerful stuff. Now there's one other area I'm just going to touch on very quickly and that is how you actually create, you know, you've got your settings, so you've got various different projects, you can save different projects with different fixtures in there, with different presets, whatever you want and recall those whenever you like. You can of course lock it, so that means that nobody can touch it while you maybe walk away from the decks for a bit or whatever, you can just have it completely locked or you can have it locked for editing. So no one can go in there and accidentally delete all your presets, but they can do the controls. So now it's locked for edit and they can do color effects and everything else. They can change all this stuff, but they can't delete, say your presets, for example. So if you've got a, somebody in the booth helping you out with your DJing for the night, you don't want to trust them entirely with your stuff, then you're good to go. Then we'll just look at the actual fixture setup. We can see we've got lots of fixtures in here. You can select all your different fixtures together and then edit them. You can change what group they're in. You can change the addresses of them. You can add new fixtures in. So if I wanna add something in and there are loads of profiles in there. This is always one of the pains with DMX stuff. If you're working with presets, it is a hassle. Um, not everything that you want is gonna be in there, especially if you're using more generic lighting, etc. from China, then you might struggle to find, and not every model is gonna be in there as well but it is actually very easy to build your own preset from scratch. So we can select a mode. So let's go back and let's create a fixture. So fixture builder, just going in, you can select the channel types for DMX. If you're familiar with DMX, you'll know what this is all about. So channel one, I'm gonna say is the dimmer, rather, oops, that's wrong, I'm gonna delete that. So channel one is gonna be the dimmer and the value that is received from the light, etc. So that's done. Channel one is the dimmer. Channel two is gonna be blue and then red and so on. You go right through to your gobos and everything else. So you can quite easily build your own fixtures as long as you have the DMX information for your fixture. It's not too difficult to build a fixture in here. And that's something I've done with a couple of mine and it, it just worked very well. And again, Wolfmix have a tutorial for that on their own YouTube, so I'm not gonna go too far into details, but suffice to say, setting up your own DMX library on here, you know, your own actual DMX universe, not that hard to do. The W1 really is very deep and this video could be a whole lot longer, but I'll just quickly run through a couple more things I didn't cover yet. There are sequences within the move and beam effects which you can program with up to eight steps and they will apply globally to all of your presets. You can also set movement limits for your moving heads, meaning they will only point in the direction you want them to. This is all done via the screen like pretty much everything else on the unit and is remarkably intuitive. And finally, there is another paid upgrade which I have not mentioned up to now, W-Link, which costs $49. This has two functions. The first is to enable the linking of two W1s together, which sounds a bit niche, but could be useful in situations like in a bar with one W1 set up in the DJ booth and another in front of house, both working simultaneously. The other function it adds is that it allows you to connect an external DMX fader board for dimming, which could be useful in some rigs and situations, but probably not relevant for most DJs. I can already picture the comments below, by the way, decrying all of these paid upgrades, and I do understand that some people will be put off by that. But I will say this, I've had the W1 on test for a good few months, and the only thing I ever needed to have unlocked for me was the visualizer, and that was only to demo it in this video. The rest of the upgrades I myself can live without, and very much doubt I would ever need them. So I'd rather have those as optional extras for those who want them, rather than baked into the cost of the base unit, which for me, does the job just fine with no upgrades required. Required. There are lots of reasons to like the W1, but there are two that stand out to me above everything else. The first is the form factor. The idea that you've got this bunch of pads, a few knobs and a screen. As someone from a DJ background, that felt very comfortable for me very quickly indeed. The second is of course the USP of the device, which is that it works fully standalone. You don't need a computer, you don't need a tablet, you plug in USB power, and then a DMX cable out to your lighting rig, and that is all you need. You can do the automated, the presets, and everything else. You can control it manually, but it's all in that box, and I find that an incredibly powerful and handy solution. As someone who does use lots of different hardware and software, I don't really want to have to worry about an extra big screen, a tablet or computer in my setup when I'm doing lighting. So I'm really, really taken with it. It may not be for everybody, though. Do let us know in the comments below. If you do DMX in your lighting rig, what kind of control system do you use right now? Is this something that you might consider instead? Or maybe you're new to DMX. Maybe this might open the doors 
to the idea of using DMX for you yet, just let us know down in the comments. That's always appreciated. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And why not drop us a like so that YouTube knows that you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. <laughs>